know that feeling when a Proxmox node silently panics at 3 a.m., a PBS job fails, a disk fails in your pool, or your storage crosses that 90% threshold, and you only find out tomorrow? Let's fix that. Today, we're wiring up Pulse, a lightweight open source monitor that watches your entire Proxmox stack in real time and yells at you on Discord, Slack, Telegram, email, carrier pigeon. I used that joke before. Whatever you use. Howdy folks, Zach Perry here with 45 Home Lab. In this video, we're standing up Pulse for Proxmox VE and Proxmox Backup Server. Real-time real -time dashboards, instant alerts, and dead simple node onboarding. All in one place, all self-hosted. Pulse was developed by R. Courtman on GitHub. Link to their repo down below in the description. So what does Pulse give you over, let's say, setting up CheckMK, NetData, or your own monitoring stack? For one, the simplicity of setup. And the second, it's built purely for Proxmox, so if you want isolated monitoring, this is the perfect tool. Along with that, you get a whole slew of things, but some of the things that I want to highlight are a unified view for Proxmox VE nodes, VMs, containers, storage usage, backup, PVE and PBS, plus snapshots all in one dashboard. Smart alerts, so up, down, backup failures, recovery, capacity thresholds, and back online confirmations. Then you have your webhooks and email, so like I mentioned, Discord, Slack, Telegram's team, notify.sh, gotify, SMTP, pick your poison. Secure by design, so credentials are encrypted at rest, not exposed to the front end, rate limited, off with lockouts, CSRF protection, bycrypt hashing, API tokens with restricted perms, and audit logging. Now, we have my Proxmox VE server hosted on my HL15, and we have Linux VMs, Windows VMs, containers, a nested Proxmox backup server. It's a bit of a chaotic mess, but Pulse doesn't care. It'll make monitoring all of this a breeze. Now we have two main options to install Pulse, one being running Docker on any Linux host or the official installer, which is what I decide to go with. And we'll run this right on my host. It'll auto detect Proxmox and create an optimized LXC or Linux container. You'll start by running this, um, GitHub user content, we'll put that on screen. <laughs> uh, but I didn't have any luck with it. So trying PVE AM and then PVE AM available, wasn't filing, finding the hard coded template that it needed to actually run this. So what it did was do curl lo, then the same URL and downloaded it directly to the Proxmox VE that I was working on. And so from there, um, it was looking for an instance of Debian 12 standard 12.7-1, and we only had 12.12-1. Uh, .12 so what we did was go through every instance that has that version that it can't find and updates it with the version that it does have, which worked perfectly fine. And we'll use this said command here uh, that I made, and I'll also throw it in the comment section description section down below so you can run it yourself there. So now let's actually take a look here and look at deploying. All right, so now that we have this up here, what we're gonna do first is let's try actually curling down the um, official way that's in the um, Docker or the GitHub repo, I should say. So we'll try that here and it'll give us our quick recommended advanced. So we'll go one, and it'll give us an ID. Now you can go to advanced to choose your own ID, port, etc., or you can list it here. So we'll go with the default and we'll select no here. We have no VLANs on my system. And then it's gonna look for our available storage resources where we can put our um, uh, template um, volume at. So we'll go with our LXC directory, go to, and from here, oh, can't find the template and it fails here. So. It says to download PVE AM uh, for Debian 12.7. So we try that. And this is where I ran into um, my issue here because if I do PVE AM available and look for any of the standard underscore 12s, um, it is only showing 12.12. .12. So what I did was I changed the curl command slightly. And right here, so instead of F uh, lowercase s, uppercase S and capital L, we will just do a capital L O and that will actually pull it down here. And what we can do is simply 
edit it by running this simple set command and that'll change every instance because it is hard coded into that script to go from 12.7 uh, to 12.12. .12. So let's run that. And then of course, since we pulled it down, we need to make it executable and that'll be install.sh. And now we can simply run that. So bash install.sh and we'll be met with the same thing here. So we'll go to our quick and default port, no auto updates, no VLANs and detecting the resources. So again, we're gonna do LXC and then it is creating our container. And you can see it's thinking a little bit more now because it's actually trying to pull it down. Um, mind you, I had this on my system a little bit um, beforehand here. So you might have a slightly different input output where it says, uh, oh, I can't find it, pulling it down now. But let's see what we get. Warning, set locale, LC underscore all, cannot change locale. And we'll wait for that to go through. Installing pulse, installing dependencies. And once that goes through and everything, I mean, you have pulse up and ready to go in under five minutes. Um, so there we go here. And it kind of just says everything that it's done for the script. So we can access it at, it picked up a DHCP address at 2.25 and our port 7655 and gives us some quick commands. So it creates a systemd service so we can restart it, check the status, um, check the logs via journal CTL and shows us how to update, reset or uninstall it. So let's actually go through and to that port. So let me click this and we'll go to our instance. And I have the one up here from before, but that one isn't relevant anymore. So, so once we get to pulse here, we're at our IP and it'll do the initial security setup. So we can generate a secure password. We'll leave our admin username as admin, keep it simple. Uh, generate that secure password here. And then our system, we'll just select our theme. And then this is what it tells you everything that's going to happen. So your admin account will be created, an API token will be generated, and all API endpoints will be protected. You'll need to log in to access the dashboard and complete. So we can see these here, we can download our credentials. So we'll do that now. And then we'll continue to log in and we'll actually just copy that password itself for now. And then admin here. So once we're actually in here, we can see, don't have too much going on. So this is gonna be our main splash page. We actually wanna add our Proxmox host now. So let's go to settings and we can do auto discovery, which honestly, great feature. So we'll flag that on. We can see every instance that I have here. So this is my bare metal system here. And these are all just nested uh, Proxmox systems that I have up and running now. We can actually go and add a PVE host. So we can add the name, the host URL here. We can authenticate either via username or password. And it'll tell you again, this is one thing I do really like that it tells you what it's doing at the bottom of everything here. So nothing's kind of up in the air. Uh, you can do your SSL here and really it just makes it so it is very straightforward and you can even test the connection beforehand, which is good. But since we have our auto discover, let's actually go through and we'll click that and it fills everything in for us in that same window and we'll update the node. Oh, we actually have to put in our token ID. So for doing that, or we can do username and password. So just keep things simple. I'll go with that right now. So we'll do root and, and we won't verify the SSL right now and we'll just update node. Close that. And we can see here, it's yellow right now. So it is scanning your network. It is trying to add it here. And in a moment or so, we should have that added. There it is. And now we can actually go back to our storage. And let's take a look here. So we have PVE, let me actually zoom in a bit. There we go. So we can see we got some stuff going on right here already. So our local LVM, that's disabled. That I did on purpose, so that's not too bad. Um, this, I am uh, <laughs> ashamed to say, I've known about this for a few months here and uh, every day that my pool is still up because um, probably mentioned in the last video, and it says it right here anyways, but uh, I made this when I had first started. I was like, I want as much storage as possible. Um, I'll do a RAID Z1 on a bunch of disks that have like 10,000 hours on them. And this has been running 24 seven since 
2020. Um, so the fact that I only have one degraded disc is um, just goes to show you um, enterprise drives are where it's at. So let's go through here and just take a quick glance at what we actually have. So our Proxmox PVE, we have our version here, the status of it, uh, it's CPU, memory usage. So using quite a bit right now, we'll have to look into that. Uh, our disk usage, so we have quite a few, quite a bit uh, free. Uh, this is just our boot drive here that it's displaying. And let's look at our physical disks here. So we have none at the moment, but let's go through and look at the backups here. So you can see all the backup jobs that I actually have running, the size of them, uh, where they're going, details on them. Uh, so it makes VOA makes um, actually administering where the backups are taken, snapshots, which I have none at the moment, PBE, PBS. So if we were adding a PBS server, it's essentially the same process there. So let's go through and try to add one of those quickly because I do have a nested PBS server. Now go to main here, we'll go to storage and let's add our node here. There we go. And do do, where am I at? Storage settings, ah, oh, PBE nodes, there we go. So manager nodes, loading configuration. And we're gonna add another PBE node unless it is showing right here. Let's see, it is not at the moment, which I believe .99 is my PBE or PBS system. So let's go to username and password again, just because again, pretty easy and root. And then we'll do our URL here. So and 8007 is the port for um, uh, PBS and don't have to put in the host name. It'll auto detect that. Now let's add our node. Oh, name is required. So let's just say PBS. Go and we'll see if it adds that. And again, just takes a moment for that to actually add to the system. And if it does fail, we can see what that looks like too. But as you can see, it is the exact same process. So very, very easy. And while that's doing that in the background there, we'll come back to that, but let's actually look at a few things here. So we can take a look at our system. So um, a lot of different things here. We can ex export our backup, which is very nice, or restore that config. So um, in the event that, you know, um, you're like me and you have things on a RAID Z1 or a single boot drive, uh, you can export that config and uh, you won't be completely dead in the water, uh, just temporarily. Uh, we have our guest URLs here, we can set up our different security options, and we have a diagnostics thing here. So I have actually haven't run this myself, so let's see what that looks like. And we'll take a look at a few other things in the meantime. We can run diagnostics first for comprehensive export data, uh, connection status here, and oh, okay, that finishes up pretty quickly actually. And okay, uptime, seven minutes, runtime, and that's for Pulse itself. Um, let's see, 2.2, PBE nodes, PBS, so authentication failed, TLS verified, oh, okay, fair enough. And then we can export, export to GitHub, but let's actually take a little bit of deep dive and some other things here. So our backups, we looked at that, alerts, which are, the other thing too is this is made by one person. I did see a few other contributors in there, but it is crazy that something this clean, this well performing is able to be deployed this easily. Like I'm really jealous of the talent of this person. Uh, but we can see here we have active alerts, uh, last 24 hours, guest overrides, and we have RVMs if they've been powered off, anything that is going on from hardware, disk, pool, perspective, we can see that. We can set threshold, so if a VM gets over a certain threshold, let's say it starts eating up a lot of memory, uh, how we're gonna be notified. So I actually did test this out, which again, so easy. I did it with uh, Google and the hardest part about doing it with Google was the whole um, trying to find the whole app password thing because to this day, I still have not bookmarked that page and you generate your app password, you put it in, from there, you're good to go. But besides that, from here, from Pulse, super easy. And then we can actually schedule things. So uh, if we don't wanna be alerted during a certain time, we can group our smart alerting, which is very nice. Uh, alert escalation and alert cooldown. 
And then we can check our history here. So everything that has happened at what time, what happened, if it's active. So a lot of active here. We're just gonna pretend we didn't see that and uh, that I take care of my Proxmox server and that it's happy and healthy. <clears throat> so let's go through and that's about it with Pulse at a glance there. Um, it is something that is that you can get really in depth on, but I don't want to bog everything down. I'd recommend that you install it yourself on, even if you just have like virtual box or something, or you want to stand up like just a quick Proxmox instance, take a look here um, and possibly a demo environment somewhere, not sure. Yeah, so that's about it for Pulse there now. For the um, actual creator of this amazing tool, Pulse is built by a solo dev on evenings and weekends as per their uh, GitHub repo. If this replaces a tangle of scripts in your rack, consider uh, GitHub sponsors or Kofi, Kofi, or if you're not ready to sponsor, just give it a star on GitHub. And that's Pulse, one dashboard, instant alerts, web hooks that actually reach you when it matters. And what do you want to see next? Uh, other alerting and monitoring setups, Proxmox related things, tools you think I'd like to test drive, drop them in the comments down below. If this helps, hit that like, subscribe, and check out store.45homelab.com to see everything we have on offer. Links to Pulse, documentation, and our socials are in the description. I'm Zach Perry, and that's about it. You want to do the thumbnails? Yeah, soon. Oh, man!